Eye, this season features in-depth lessons from a featured designer every week. I'm Katie Hacker, and joining me today is author and artist Mary Hetmansberger to show us some creative ways to do torch-fired enameling. I am so excited about this project, Mary. Hey, this is fun. This is good. This is really good stuff. Um, I'm going to show you a lot of different techniques, and some maybe that you haven't tried, and some that are just make it a lot of fun. It's real fun. It's real spontaneous. And we're not going to get into a lot of designing today, but I'm going to show you what you can do once you get okay. the pieces made. So the first thing you have to do is you've got to get your copper. And I use 24 gauge or thicker. Anything thinner, you're going to run the risk of the enameling you know, cracking off. The other thing with torch fire enameling, you have to be aware that we're not using a counter enamel. So there's not glass back here and glass up here, there's just glass on one side. And the reason I'm doing it that way is because everything that I use for my designing, I actually layer it. So it's safe, it's, gonna, it's not gonna bend, it's not gonna move. So I can use a 24 gauge and it works out pretty well. I'm just gonna cut this with scissors just to show you how I would get a shape. Basically, I would get any sort of shape, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shape and I'm going to clean it. And you can use a piece that has already been annealed or heated, or you can use a plain piece of copper. This piece of copper, what I'm going to do on this is take a, an abrasive scrubber or abrasive product, and this is just a green scrubby. And what I do is I just come in, put this on here, and you really want to just rough the surface up. So I'm going to come in. And the, what you're looking for, when you run, when you put a regular piece of copper in water, it'll separate and kind of, um, oh, I guess the best word to, is separate. Let me show you the difference here. OK. So this, if you put this in water, see how it all separates? Yes. And it's dirty. So when you, when you, once you have made it really rough, then it will sheet. Then it will sheet. Then it sheets. So oh, yeah. that means that it's going to, you know, it's going to stay better and it's okay. going to hold to it better. And does that tooth also provide a place for the enameling to kind of settle in? Well, that's it. That's it. And you can also do things like, um, oh, I can't think. Uh, steel wool? No, nah, you, can, you can do steel wool, but you can even uh, rough it up different ways. But this oh. is a real easy way to do it. So what we're going to do is now that I have this rough, consider the fact that you also want to plan ahead. If you're going to want this to have holes in it, you want to do it, and now. do it now. And I tend to not take my enamel all the way to the edges. I just tend to work kind of in the center okay. on this. So I've got that. Let me get this out of the way a little bit. Now, what we're going to need to do is have a, a dust mask for this process because you're dealing with basically ground up glass. You have to be really careful. So make sure you wear a dust mask. I'm going to pull that up as soon as I get this open. And I have a sifter. Oh, okay. And what I'm going to do is get the dust mask I'll on. Put mine on too. And then I'm going to come in and I'm just lightly putting this over the surface like that. Okay? Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up then and take this up here. And you can actually work right on your screen, but a lot of times if you spill anything on the screen, then you've got the glass. So I'm just using a regular propane torch and the only thing with this type of torch you have to make sure that the nozzle stays higher than the tank or it'll fill up with gas. So you want to turn it to the left and it's a self-igniting which is really nice. So you want to come up underneath and if you'll notice I have avoided that ring in the center because I don't want to heat that up. <clears throat> All my heat will go to that. So I'm just working kind of on the edge of this grate and I'm coming up from the bottom and heating it. And I'm about an inch to an inch and a half from the copper or the grate, because that's about the hottest part of the torch. And I don't know if you saw it, but it basically just turned into glass. And you want to make sure that you heat it enough that it sort of glows. Okay? Now, the reason you want to do from the bottom is because what happens, if I came in from the top, obviously I'd blow all my glass off. Glass. So you have to let it air cool because obviously if we throw that in water, we're going to get it cracking. So I'm going to show you another one. And actually, I'm going to just kind of turn my thing here. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to actually work up here now. And I need to get my dust mask, so let me get that on here. Hold okay, on. I'll do mine too. Yep. OK. And again, I'm going to just come in around the top. Like so. There we go. 
Okay, and I, I really prefer putting it on, but it's hard to <laughs> navigate hard to through all this with all this. And I've made this little tool just out of a piece of wire. I hammered the end. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to draw some lines through this. Okay, so this is a technique for creating the pattern before you enamel it. Exactly, exactly. Right. On this one, I'm going to over enamel it or over torch it. So I'm going to come in from the bottom, just as I've done before on the very first one. Um, obviously, you can use stencils, so I could have put a piece of paper and put the uh, enamel on and then taken the paper up. That's always kind of fun. Okay, so I'm going to heat this. It's almost ready to go. Okay, now what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to kind of over torch it. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to come in from the top. I'm turning it really, really, really like overly red. Come in from the bottom. And this particular color is ivory. And it's really fun to over, overdo the enamels that are like whites or grays or yellow or the cream or ivory because they really tend to take on a whole bunch of different um, coloration once you've over torched them. So I'm coming in from the bottom again. I'm going to get it nice and red again. And of course, we have our glasses on, but you should always wear safety glasses when you're yeah, using Yeah, absolutely. The, the only thing, though, is really this torch is a real easy one. Now, see what I'm doing? I'm actually taking this off. If I want to get this even more red and I don't want to lose any heat in the sink of the grate, I can do that, too. Okay, so I'm going to bring this up. The, as long as you have some kind of eye protection. So if you just have reading glasses or glasses that are big enough, you're, you're okay. It's always good to have your um, other. So I wanted to point out, this one's cooled off. So I wanted to point out this first one. And this is just an ivory. And you can see that it's very, you know, very normal color. But I also want to point out that a lot of these others, this is also an ivory. So what I've done is I've taken and done what I just did here, where oh. I made I made little made a little squares, but I over torched it, heating it really hard on this end and not so much on that. Yeah, so, so it actually burnt gradient. it. Oh, that's yeah, really cool. this is also ivory, and this is ivory. So you can tell you get a whole bunch of different coloration. This is all the same exact color. Oh wow! So, so it's you really get, kind of fun. Yeah, a lot of different effects. A lot of different effects from something. So let me let me go ahead. I'm going to rush this a little bit. Sometimes you can kind of do that. And this one is really fun because it's even now a, more of a gray, you know, so you can get a lot of different colorations. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you, which is quite fun, is to take, let me do this one here. And this here is using a stamp pad. So um, here are some different stamp pads I have, just scrapbooking stamps. The main thing you want to do is not use something that's a real tight, tight uh, pattern. You want something more open. So what we're going to do is we need a holding agent. Okay. Now I want to also go into this holding agent is what you would use if you're um, doing something three-dimensional. So I'm going to take this holding agent and I'm going to put it just gently on. And you need a very small amount. So I'm going to put this on the top. Okay. And I'm going to give you this. I'll let okay. you put that away. And I'm going to stamp this on the top. Like that. And then again, get my dust mask. Here it is. Oh, good. And do this. Now on this one, I need to knock off what is not going to stick. Okay, so this is where I'm going to definitely have my dust mask because whenever you're handling the powder and putting it back in the container, there you go. All right, and then we're going to come in from the bottom again and heat it. Now on something like this, it's a little bit a little bit longer, I need to get, I need to kind of do this at an angle so it's going to shoot through the whole, you know, shoot across the whole piece. A couple of other things. Um, when you're doing the enameling, I've, you can see I've got a piece of paper and some of the, the enamel has now fallen on the piece of paper. What you don't want to do is shake that off. You want to fold that paper up 
put it in the trash very gently because you want to make sure that you're not going to lose any of that dust into the air. Okay. Because that's, I mean, safety-wise, that's the main thing. So basically, this is what this is going to turn out to be. So that, that creates a really neat effect. This one here is really fun. All I've done is taken copper foil, and I first start out with a, with a bare piece like this, and just like this, and then I put my powder on it like right. this. And then the next step, let me turn this this way. The next step is to come in usually with a transparent. And again, the dress mask. When you use the transparent, is that because you want to see the color underneath? Um, I'm going to see the transparent underneath. And what I'm also going to do then is take this little piece oh. of, uh, this is copper foil. This is the foil, what it looks like. This is about a 0 .003. I've done a little weaving. I'm going to put this on top. Okay, and then I'm going to do this again. So that's kind of acting as your adhesive then. I'm actually sandwiching it in there, yep. All right. So you need, you need them on both sides. You need the, the uh, enamel, the dry enamel on both sides. So I'm going to come up again and then fire it. And this would be the same thing. Being that it's clear enamel, what's going to be really nice about that is you're, it's not going to change any of the look. You're going to have your base color, you're also going to have just a nice shiny coat on the top of it. Okay. Yeah, so it really does have that glass-like finish. I mean, exactly, and it'll it'll have a really nice thing. Now, the only thing I wanted to show you on this too is when once you get it started, this cup. See how it's starting to go now. What you need to do is a lot of times you'll need to come in and actually push the little edges down if they didn't quite. You know, don't worry so much in the beginning, but once you start to work with it, then you want to make sure that the edges all have right. adhered. To be all flush. Yeah. Adhered. So I, I don't know if we have time to show you anything three-dimensional. Yeah, let's look at it. Okay. So this is some three-dimensional work, and these are really fun to do. These are these little cones that I do. And this is no more than taking a piece of metal, and I usually cut it in this sort of a triangle. Um, and this, what this does is it allows me to have a really interesting edge. So I've taken this piece, and I'll show you how to make this a three-dimensional piece. So I'm taking a long needle nose pliers. And this one you've already annealed with the torch. I've you can already tell annealed. From the color. And on all of these that I just picked up copper and went with it, you have to realize all of those were pre-washed. I didn't, you know, make sure that you know that they're all been washed, so it saves some time. But then you create your shape, and this one then has been washed. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the holding agent. Okay. So we use the holding agent. And I don't really need to completely Oops. demonstrate this. But you're going to paint this on and then sprinkle your uh, powder on top again. What I want to show you, what's really fun about these, is the different, again, what you get. Now, to you know, different kind of variations you get. To fire this, you're either going to have to hold it with pliers or you're going to have to use, like, um, they have these metal like cones furniture, like oh, cone okay. things and furniture that you can lay it on. Either okay. way is fine. And to finish that one up, I'd be glad to show you how I finished it up. It's kind of a fun little project at the end here. But um, see all the different variations you get. This is basically, I've poked two holes with just a... Oh, with your little metal punch? Yeah, with a little hole punch. And I love doing these. These are really fun. I'll show you how to do the end of this one. Okay. You come in with a hammer. And you want to hammer the end of your wire. So you get your good paddle there. Get a nice little paddle. And you're going to shove this through the hole, like so. And you just match the gauge of your wire to the hole punch that you used? Yes. This is about, this is actually, I like to use, oh, I don't have my cutters here, we'll just use these. Actually, I like to use about a 16 gauge for this part, and okay. then I for the top, hanger is going to be about a 20 gauge. Okay. So I've created the little hammered paddles and then I come in with a 20 gauge and I do the wrapping. Now this is overkill as far as the length but you need this length to get the um, sort of... The coiling yeah, on. Yeah, and to just make sure you get it right and then you make the big loop like Looking so. Looking good. 
and let's, then finish it on this side. Yeah, let's take a look at some of your samples because you have so many beautiful things and all of these use the different techniques that we've talked about today. Yeah, and also I've used beads on this. This is just seed beads and it was actually a bad beading job oh. that I just threw on the top and there's that and then the metal, metal that I've added into. Oh, these are great. Well, thanks, Mary.